Hello all my dear class 9 students. I'm welcoming you back to our English class and we have been doing a lot of topics. Now the literature portions are almost covered. Today we will be doing Lord Allen's Daughter which is a poetry written by Thomas Campbell. I repeat, Lord Allen's Daughter written by Thomas Campbell. He was a poet who lived between 1777 to 1844. 1777 to 1844 the poem that we are going to read now is a ballad a ballad is a type of poem that is almost like a folk tale or it had been passed on from our uh, from our grandparents and from generations back so this is a ballad it is usually a long ballads are usually long poems okay we have read about the sonnet we have read about the different types of poetry and this is a ballad i want you to know that because we are going to read a poem which is also a folk tale of the scottish you might have heard of the scottish people they are the people who lives in scotland okay you have a lot of stories, a lot of folk tales in your English books from the lower classes that you have about the Scottish people. And so, here, you will also come across the word Lord and Chieftain, which will be different from the common terms that we use right now. So I want you to keep it in your mind. You might have heard, before getting into the poem, you might have heard about marriages being settled. Sometimes, parents want a different type of partner for their children whereas the choices will vary there a person may want somebody who of the qualities may admire some person for some certain qualities but there will be some parents who do not want their children to get married with those type of people sometimes parents can have a lot of cultural restrictions they would want their child or they would want their children to get married to someone of the same culture to someone of the same religion or even from the same clan or tribes this is what we are going to read about here and you will see in this poem that there are three main characters you will see lord aline his daughter and also another person that is the chieftain I'm going to explain to you of what Lord and Chieftain is. Lord is usually, uh, in, the, in the olden days, in the Scottish tradition, a Lord is someone who has ownership over very, a very big region. Okay, So they are considered to be Lords and Chieftains are also head of clans. You might have heard of clans, right? Clan here in a context, you can even imagine of the Kel, but it would be a little bigger in the context. You can imagine the term of tribe. So a chieftain is a person who is the head over a clan or a tribe and the Lord will be a person. It can even go beyond the clans, but it would be over vast regions, which is above the chieftain. So this is what we are going to read about. We will see the lady, Lord Allen's daughter. That means she fell in love with a chieftain which the father did not agree you can all picture that in your mind right now the father may be having a lot of restrictions not just because he did not like this person but he might be having some other persons in his mind that would suit his daughter i'm going to leave that to you whether it is right for parents to choose your partner or to choose it by yourself we will not be discussing about that because i want you to do some thinking works here and in the Scottish tradition, we see a lot of stories which are the close-knit clans. They are so attached to one another that they do not want inter-clan marriages. That is what we have learned from the books. And the same thing might have been experiencing by the father, that is the Lord. But it is always normal, right? The girl fell in love with a chieftain who is not from the area. And that is the reason why the father was against their relationship. The father was against them. So what they had to do was they had to flee. We are going to discuss about that. In the first paragraph, we will see that the chieftain was requesting a boatman to take them, to ferry them across the Loggai Lake. I want you to remember the name, the Loggai Lake. You may have some pronunciations in different ways but I would like you to pronounce it that way there was a lake because 
in Scotland, I, I have understood that there are a lot of islands. And in order to cross islands, you know, you cannot go by road. And we are discussing a story that was long back. So we have to know that we, they might not be having all the facilities of flight and planes around, okay? So they had to cross the lake every time they want to go to another island. And so there was a problem that the two lovers had to face. And the chieftain requested the boatman to take them across the lake. Because, why? Because the father's men were riding hard behind them riding hard means they were chasing them it's already three days i want you to know that it's already three days that the two lovers had fled from the father the chieftain might not necessarily be planning to flee with the girl but he might have found that the father was so stern and so stubborn in his decision against their relationship so this might have forced him compelled him to take this step because I'm sure nobody would like to go against somebody's parents, even if they want to have you as their partner. You also can put yourself into their shoes and you will understand how courageous one has to be in order to take these steps. And these two men went and since the chieftain was also a rich man, he requested the boatman to take them across the lake and that he will give him a silver pound. Here we do not use pound, we use rupee, right? So you, you may not have a good idea of what a pound is, but you can imagine. Uh, one rupee will be equal to, no, one pound will be equal to almost 90 plus rupees in our context. Okay, and this pound is not any ordinary pound, it is a silver pound. He requested the boatman to take them across so that he will give him a silver pound. You can imagine the necessity that he had to cross the lake. And just to cross the lake, he is giving such a good amount for that. And the boatman could not understand it. And he also appears to be in such a hurry because he said, do not tarry. The word tarry means to stay longer or to hold back. So he is requesting the boatman to not hold back and move on. And remember this, the weather at that present moment is a very stormy weather. So even if you don't travel by water, or even if you don't travel by boat or ship, you can also imagine how the water would be when the weather is stormy. So they were facing a situation like that. On one side, the father and his men were riding on horses, chasing after them. And it's already three days that they had been fleeing. They had been running away from the girl's parents. So it will be a difficult time. You might have gone against your parents in some ways and the moment they get angry with you, what do you feel inside? You, we all have felt scared at one point of time, right? When you know that you have done something against your parents' wishes. So the girl also might be feeling the same thing and even the man, the chieftain, might be scared because he had taken this step and that he should be responsible for whatever the consequences, for whatever the result must be. So he is willing to pay any price if the boatman is willing to carry them across the lake. Okay, And you will see that in the second paragraph, the boatman even wants to know why they were in such a hurry. And we will see that the chieftain would be explaining the difficulties that they were facing in all these days. And the boatman did not want to risk his life because if anything goes wrong in the middle of the water, in the middle of the lake, not only these two lovers, but also his life would be put at risk. That was the reason why he did not want to go. But on the request, he might have been making an earnest, a sincere request to this boatman again and again because it is very necessary for him to cross the lake before the father's man comes. And he also said that if we do not cross the lake right now, the angry father would reach us and they could hear the, the galloping of the horses coming behind them. They could hear it. And so he said, if we were found here, my blood would stain the heather. 
The header means the grass there. Okay, that means he is telling the boatman that if he does not cross the lake at that very moment, and if the father reaches them before they could cross the lake, they would kill him. The father would obviously kill him and take the daughter back away from the lover. And he is not bothered about his life here. He is not asking all this because he did not want to die. But he has a concern for the girl. Imagine you love someone so much and that partner and the lover, the person whom you consider to be your lover is not with you. You can feel the desperation there, right? You can feel the pain that you had to go through. For your case, you can even think of someone you love, maybe your parents or maybe your siblings. If you are to live without their love and without their support, you cannot imagine that at this young age. And so when the Lord reached the chieftain, he can imagine of what would happen to his life. And even if he die, even if he dies, he is not really bothered about that, but he is worried for the beautiful lady who would be left all alone in pain. And that was the reason why he did not want to die. He had been explaining it over and over again to the boatman. And he said that it would be difficult for her to live without my love. And so the boatman, even though he was worried, he agreed to take them across the lake, across the water. Not, and he said, it is not for your silver bride, okay? It is not for the money that you are offering me right now, but it is for the bonny bride. It is for the beautiful lady who will, who will be left all alone without the lover if you are killed. And so the boatman decided to take them across the lake even amidst the stormy weather. You can... You can all imagine the experience that the the experience that they would be going through and even the sacrifice the both men will be doing for this too because he is not sure whether he can be saved and if these two lover dies they, he would also perish along with them though he had all these confusions in his mind he had all these worries in his mind he had to sacrifice it because he saw the strong love that these two young couple had these two couple had within them he wanted to save them and even the girl said i would rather face an angry sea than an angry father so you can imagine the anger of the father too right the lady was not scared to go and die in the water instead of facing the father's anger so he and and so she said that she is willing to face whatever comes ahead of her even if she had to go on the boat in the stormy weather and then they remember this is not a ship a ship would have been much safer but they are just going to go on a boat which would be rowed by a boatman a single boatman and in spite of all this the girl said that it is much easier for her to face the stormy sea than to face an angry father that was what she said and this might have shocked and pleased the boatman at the same time and here, when they have just stepped in, they were trying to row across the lake because that was their only option. And when they stepped in, the, water be, the, the weather became more stormy, it became fiercer, and that they could not cross the lake easily. They just have started. They have just started, but they can easily see that they are in trouble right now though they did not go very far away from the shore but the only option here is to get into the water and move on because even if they stay back they're fed the thing that they are going to face in front of the father would not be as good too and so there there is no point for them to be together the chieftain will surely be killed the girl will be left alone but there will not be any peace with the girl even if her father saves her life even if her father does not do any harm to her life she is not going to live a peaceful life a happy life that was the reason why they have sacrificed everything and just when they stepped in it feels like the water the water began to grow fierce and their boat is almost on the verge of sinking you know what is sinking right if you put a small ball in a bucket of water and you fill it the 
plate or the ball will sink down into the bottom of the bucket. And so you can imagine a boat as that of a plate. And they were facing all this and the girl just got in. As soon as they got in and they began to move a little bit forward, they saw that the father, that is Lord Alain and his man had already reached the shore. And by the time they reached the shore, their boat was almost sinking because there, the weather is so stormy that no one could save them and they are in the middle of the water. They could not turn back and they could not even move forward. When the father reached the shore of the lake, he found that it was too late for him. Okay, He found that the father had made a wrong decision. He himself realized that because his daughter was almost sinking into the water with one hand around her lover that is the chieftain and with one hell a hand held up for eight that is help okay eight you will find the word aid that will be help and so she was asking for help from somebody but no one could step in the father stood there regretting of what he had done of what he had said maybe and then he said come back oh my daughter I would forgive the chieftain. Come back. I will have. I will forgive everything. That's what the father was saying. But there could be no one to get into the water because the weather was so stormy that the girl and his lover, along with the boatman, could not come back. They could not even go forward. They were just there, and the father had to be a mere spectator, standing there, looking at his own daughter drowning without any help. Even though he wanted to help, it has become helpless for him because he cannot get into the water in this kind of weather and save the girl. And so he realized that it is too late for him to make this decision to forgive her daughter and accept her lover as she wanted to accept the chieftain. So this is what the father had realized and this is also a lesson to let the parents, to let the elders know that they have to think twice before they give a decision or before they say anything to their children or to the youngsters. The same thing with you all, my dear students. You may be thinking that you are just a teenage and this poem does not relate to you in any matter or it is just an advice for elders. I want you to be careful. There will be a time when you will become parents, when you will become teachers and elders in the family. And so you have to make a decision. And even at this point of time, in your 15, 16 years, you are still elder to somebody. The words that you say to one of your younger ones or one of your juniors, you may say it casually, but that would meet, mean a lot to those who listens to you. So you have to keep that in your mind, okay? That you have to be careful with your decision and the way you treat your juniors and the younger ones. Because the words that you say will affect them in a very strong way. That you have to be careful not to let your youngster, your younger ones to take the wrong decision like the two lovers have taken. This is what we have learned from the poem and I would also want you to study the rhyming scheme. That is a common thing that we always do in poetry but if there is anyone who still is not clear with the rhyming scheme, I would like you to take your book and read the first paragraph once again. You will see the last word or the last syllable. Example, a syllable will be this, chieftain has got two syllables. T, A, I, and Tain would be called as a syllable. Chief will be another syllable. So what you have to do is, you have to take note of the last word or the last syllable in each line and mark the first one as A. And if the second one does not sound similar with this, example, Chief Tain and Clan does not sound similar. So that means this will be A and this will be B. And if you look at your poem, you will find the rhyming scheme as A, B, A, B. Every poem has its own rhyming scheme. And this is what describes a poet. Because poets are very careful in using words which rhymes well with one another. You will also find alliteration in your poem. Okay? If you look at his horseman hard behind us, right? Alliteration means words which have same letters 
in in two three words following each other he starts with age horseman starts with age heart starts with age right so those kind of letters or words are called as alliteration you will also see the use of alliteration by the poet in this poem and with this we are going to conclude today's class i would like to ask you to fill in the blanks that is given for the summary after doing that you will get to know yourself on how well you have learned this poem. Thank you all very much for listening and I hope this lesson will help you. Thank you.